My son has had severe epilepsy since he was born. For 15 years, he'd have 10 to 20 epileptic seizures every day. And uh, our whole life was basically revolved around his disability. And yet I would pray for other friends who had sick children and it seemed like their kids got better. Um, but my son didn't. The one moment that redefined this question for me was probably in 2004 with the tsunami that happened in Asia. And just the sheer devastation of a natural disaster just brought me to my knees. And where I was at the television saying, God, seriously, why? The question, how can God allow these bad things to happen, I think is a, it's a reality. It's a hard, hard question. In fact, maybe the hardest question God allows humankind to make their own choices and ultimately they can lead to some magnificent things. I mean, you have a look at the extraordinary things, extraordinary things that human beings have been able to accomplish uh, in the freedom and autonomy that God has given us. But the downside or the dark side of this autonomy or this freedom is that we can just create the most vile and contemptible and cruel and vicious outcomes of being human. A lot of what we see in the world, in my opinion, of what I've experienced, is, you know, you have generations of men, you know, women, father, mother, children, when they make the choice not to love, love God, love each other, you play that out and um, there, there's a lot of pain that comes with that. The suffering that comes from nature or earthquakes or hurricanes or things like that, I, I find harder to explain. And uh, I guess you've got to live with the mystery of it. Um, I think the Christian answer is the best one. Where when you go out east into the eastern religions, it doesn't make any sense of suffering at all. Uh, it's kind of like suck it up. It doesn't make any, it doesn't attempt to try and make sense of it or derive meaning. So the Buddhist answer, for instance, and I have great respect for Buddhism, the Buddhist answer says it's not real. Um, suffering has no reality. Well, you know, I, I think you tell that to a suffering person and I don't think it makes sense to them. The Christian answer actually doesn't answer everything uh, particularly when you're suffering, um, but it is the best one around, uh, without a doubt. About five years ago, I was pregnant, and I heard the words that no mother ever wants to hear, your child is not going to live. Um, on April 7th, 2008, I delivered a little girl who was alive when she was born. Her name was Audrey Caroline, and she lived for two and a half hours. We loved her a lifetime's worth that short amount of time. Watched her get her first bath and a little haircut. But later that night when everyone was gone and it was just my husband and I alone with her, as time went on, we knew that we were gonna have to call a nurse to come in and take her. I had to hand my daughter to someone and watch her be taken away from me, knowing that I wouldn't see her again this side of heaven. And as I lay in that hospital bed and everything in me wanted to just bang on all the buttons and tell them to bring her back, I really called out to God in a way I never had before. And I just said, I can't do this. And I need you to just be here right now. I just need you to hold me. He did, he did. I will tell you that in that moment, I saw um, a side of God that I've never experienced and have never forgotten since then. Just his faithfulness to one girl in a hospital room who was devastated. And I just really felt that he was there. I talk to people about the stuff they've gone through, I, to be honest, the, for me the best answer and the, the most appropriate response as, as a Christian, as a believer, is to cry too. 
to hold the hand and to weep too and then to introduce them to someone who helps pull you out of a pit and not in some weird, messed up, quick fix kind of a way. I get really annoyed <laughs> and when we Christians propose that as an answer, as like the quick in a box fix that changes everything. Um, but there's a, there's a phrase, it's in one of the books of the Bible which talks about, I, uh, and it's this, it says, I know my Redeemer lives. And, um, and that part of the Bible is always won me because it talks about this person who buys back all that's been lost um, through your own helplessness, um, through violence, through your own foolishness. And um, that's who I met. <laughs> Someone who, who helped me over, over years and blood, sweat and tears um, bring back that what was lost. We have seen God use our son's sickness um, in amazing ways and people have found faith in Jesus through his life. And I guess maybe God does uh, use some people and their disabilities and their struggles to help other people to find God. You know, I, I do think like if there really is a heaven and if what is said about heaven from the words of Jesus is true and that there my son will never be sick again, and someday I'll see him as this perfect body in this perfect form. And then Ryan looks at his life, and we all see the amount of people that have been influenced by his life. Am I gonna argue with what God did? Probably not, I'll probably be thankful that he allowed our family, um, I guess, to, to struggle through. Um, and yet, why does he just help other people? I don't know, but I'm glad he does. I'm glad he just helps. I'm glad that no matter what we see, apparently God has some plan for that. We see that God actually comes to the planet. He actually lives among us so that he understands our suffering, our hurt, our pain. He understands it all. Then Jesus dies on the cross and in the mystery of faith, all the junk of the world, all the junk that's in our hearts, all the junk that's in our relationships, all of that junk dies with him. So in the Christian worldview, God doesn't leave our world in the state that it is, but actually is seeking to heal it and bring us back. We feel as though we're in this battle. And um, really what we need in the midst of that battle is a hero to step in for us. The hero obviously is, is God. I believe that God considers those who struggle with him to be heroes also. In fact, I, I would go so far as to say that those of his children who struggle against all of these terrible things that we see in the world um, are cheered on by the population of heaven, and um, if they should die in their struggle, I believe they get a hero's welcome when they meet him. <laughs>